Search the Scriptures. We are on study number 16 in the book of Deuteronomy, and this covers chapter 22 and chapter 23. And there are three questions that we are going to be answering in these two chapters. The first question is this. In what ways do these laws safeguard life, property, and reputation, and thus put into operation the sixth commandment and the law to love one's neighbor? Number two, how do these laws uphold the principle of chastity implicit in the seventh commandment, and how do the laws and customs of our contemporary society compare? And finally, what steps were to be taken to maintain the purity of the congregation and thus of the worship of God, and how is this applied in the New Testament to the church on earth and to heaven itself? Well, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 22 and chapter 23. Deuteronomy 22, beginning with the first verse. If you see your brother's ox or sheep straying, do not ignore it, but be sure to take it back to him. If the brother does not live near you, or if you do not know who he is, take it home with you and keep it until he comes looking for it. Then give it back to him. Do the same if you find your brother's donkey or his cloak or anything that he loses. Do not ignore it. If you see your brother's donkey or his ox fall in the road, do not ignore it. Help him get it to its feet. A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wear women's clothing. For the Lord your God detests detests anyone who does this. If you come across a bird's nest beside the road, either in a tree or on the ground, and the mother is sitting on the young or on the eggs, do not take the mother with the young. You may take the young, but be sure to let the mother go, so that it may go well with you, and you may have a long life. When you build a new house, make a parapet around your roof, so that you may not bring the guilt of bloodshed on your house if someone falls from the roof. Do not plant two kinds of seed in your vineyard. If you do, not only the crops that you plant, but also the fruit of the vineyard will be defiled. Don't plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. Don't wear clothes of wool and linen woven together. Make tassels on the four corners of the cloak that you wear. In verse 13, if a man takes a wife and after lying with her, dislikes her and slanders her and gives her a bad name, saying, I married this woman, but when I approached her I did not find proof of her virginity, then the girl's father and mother should bring proof that she was a virgin to the town elders at the gate. The girl's father will say to the elders, I gave my daughter in marriage to this man, but he dislikes her. Now he has slandered her and said, I did not find your daughter to be a virgin. But here is the proof of my daughter's virginity. Then her parents shall display the cloth before the elders of the town, and the elders shall take the man and punish him. They shall find him a hundred shekels of silver and give them to the girl's father, because this man has given an Israelite virgin a bad name. She shall continue to be his wife. He must not divorce her as long as he lives. If, however, the charge is true, and no proof of the girl's virginity can be found, she shall be brought to the door of her father's house, and there the man of, men of her town shall stone her to death. She has done a disgraceful thing in Israel by being promiscuous while still in her father's house. You must purge the evil from among you. If a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man who slept with her and the woman must die. You must purge the evil from Israel. If a man happens to meet in a town a virgin pledged to be married, and he sleeps with her, you shall take both of them to the gate of that town and stone them to death. The girl, because she was in a town and did not scream for help, and the man, because he violated another man's wife. You must purge the evil from among you. But if out in the country a man happened to meet a girl pledged to be married and rapes her, only the man who has done this shall die. Do nothing to the girl. She has committed no sin deserving death. This case is like that of someone who attacks and murders his neighbor. For the man found the girl out in the country, and, and, though, he, and though the betrothed girl screamed, there was no one to rescue her. If a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her, and they are discovered, he shall pay the girl's father fifty shekels of silver. He must marry the girl, for he has violated her. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. A man is not to marry his father's wife. He must not dishonor his father's bed. Deuteronomy chapter 23. No one who has been emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the assembly of the Lord. No one born of a forbidden marriage, nor any of his descendants, may enter the assembly of the Lord, even down to the tenth generation. 
No Ammonite or Moabite or any of his descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, even down to the tenth generation. For they did not come to meet they did not come to meet you with the bread and water on your way when you came out of Egypt, and they hired Balaam, son of Beor, from Pethor, and Aram the Hiram, to pronounce a curse on you. However, the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, but turned the curse into a blessing for you, because the Lord your God loves you. Do not seek a treaty of friendship with them as long as you live. Do not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. Do not abhor an Egyptian, because you lived as an alien in his country. The third generation of children born to them may enter the assembly of the Lord. When you are encamped against your enemies, keep away from everything impure. If one of your men is unclean because of a nocturnal admission, he is to go outside the camp and stay there. But as evening approaches, he is to wash himself, and at sunset he may return to the camp. Designate a place outside the camp where you can go to relieve yourself. As part of your equipment, have something to dig with, and when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. For the Lord your God moves about in your camp to protect you and to deliver your enemies to you. Your camp must be holy, so that he will not see among you anything indecent and turn away from you. If a slave has taken refuge with you, do not hand him over to his master. Let him live among you wherever he likes and in whatever town he chooses. Do not oppress him. No Israelite man or woman is to become a shrine prostitute. You must not bring the earnings of a female prostitute or of a male prostitute into the house of the Lord your God to pay any vow, because the Lord your God detests them both. Do not charge your brother interest, whether on money or food or anything else that, that may earn interest. You may charge a, foreign, a foreigner interest, but not a brother Israelite, so that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you put your hand to in the land you are entering to possess. If you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not be slow to pay it, for the Lord your God will certainly demand it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. But if you refrain from making a vow, you will not be guilty. Whatever your lips utter, you must be sure to do, because you made your vow freely to the Lord your God with your own mouth. If you enter your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat all the grapes you want, but do not put any in your basket. If you enter your neighbor's grain field, you may pick kernels with your hands, but you must not touch a sickle to his standing grain. Question number one, in what ways do these laws safeguard life, property, and reputation, and thus put into operation the sixth commandment and the law to love one's neighbor? Well, all these laws deal with keeping peace and order in society, as well as caring for the rights and the property of other people and treating them with respect. Question number two, how do these laws uphold the principle of chastity implicit in the seventh commandment, and how do the laws and customs of our contemporary society compare? Well, God obviously takes the sin of adultery far more seriously than in our society. The scale of adultery in our nation and within the so-called church is an abomination to the Lord. We must really be a stench in the nostrils of God. A no-fault divorce, for example, is definitely not found in the vocabulary of the Lord. Question number three, what steps were to be taken to maintain the purity of the congregation and thus of the worship of God? And how is this applied in the New Testament to the church on earth and to heaven itself? Well, God is clearly concerned with all aspects of life. Uh, and he demands that his people set the standard for those that are around them. And everything that we do in the church, we should set the highest of standards and be an example to all those that are around us. I hope you're living a life that is a godly example to those around you today. hope this study has been a blessing to you. God bless and have a fantastic rest of your day.